So the good news about this unit on basis is that it doesn't introduce any new uh, techniques or things to check when it comes to the computations. It's just combining two skills that you already know how to do. Check for whether or not something is spanning and check for whether or not something is uh, independent. And uh, in fact, in the case of a square system, we'll see these questions turn out to be exactly the same thing. So let's look, for example, um, at this set of three vectors in R3 and um, check to see whether or not they are a basis. So to check for um, independence, um, I could write these uh, in, uh, in a matrix. and then row reduce. And it turns out that this row reduces to the identity. So when I see that, and I see that I have a, a pivot in each column, then I know that uh, this is, in fact, a basis. So, or this is, in fact, independent. So, um, by, by, oh, and then the other thing before we get to that is to check whether or not it is a spanning set. And so, based on the, and then the check for that is actually the same computation. So, I look at one, uh, minus one, zero, one, one, two, and one, two, one. And when I row reduce and get the identity, this time what I'm noticing is that um, I have no row of zeros right here. Now, if I had a row of zeros there, then there would be some vector B that I could adjoin to the matrix right here to guarantee that there's something non-zero in the last coordinate. And that would get me something inconsistent. So it's actually the same criterion. Okay, so let's compare this with uh, the example that we looked at before. Uh, so we had um, 1, 1, minus 3, and uh, 0, 1, 1, and minus 3, 1, 13 as our three vectors. And we can check to see whether or not this is a basis. So um, is it independent? Well, let's see. So if we do 1, 1, minus 3, 0, 1, 1, negative 3, 1, 13, and we row reduce, then what we end up with is uh, 1, 0, minus 3, 0, 1, 4, 0, 0, 0. And we saw that this shows a what dependence relation we have, namely that our third vector is um, minus 3 times the first vector plus 4 times the second vector. So we can just read those uh, entries off as the coefficients necessary for a dependence relation. Okay, 
Um, at the same time, if we uh, were to check for spanning, then we would have seen that we end up with this uh, row of zeros down here in the bottom. And because of that row of zeros, by adjoining B, we could have produced one of those rows that's your indication of an inconsistent system. And so the reason why, uh, pictorially, is that it turns out that uh, w what we see from this, this row reduction is, whoops, is that um, our first vector and our second vector and our third vector all lie in the same plane. So now if I were to choose uh, a B, if I were to like consider, okay, let's take these, these three vectors, put them in a matrix, and say, okay, can I solve this equation? Well, if I, if I happen to choose B in the plane, then yes. I would be able to um, uh, represent this one as a sum of, let's see, so say I take this one and I multiply it by minus two and get out to like here somewhere. Uh, and then I take um, this, this orange one and I add on a copy of it and I could get to B that way. Or, I could do uh, minus three times the orange, or minus two times the orange one, and get out to here somewhere, which uh, the way I've drawn it, it doesn't look like it's in the same plane, but it actually, it, it's supposed to be in the same plane. Here, let me just extend my plane a little bit. Boop, okay. Now, <coughs> hopefully it looks like we're still in the same plane. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go grab some number of copies of this uh, dark blue vector right here, and I could get B that way as well. So not only uh, do I have solutions for this particular B, but I have multiple solutions, non-uniqueness, right? Um, however, if I pick some other vector over here, uh, B is already used, let's call it D. Okay, so here's D. Um, if this one is, say, orthogonal to that plane, so it's perpendicular at every point on uh, every uh, vector in that plane. Uh, there's no way that I'm going to be able to get to D by adding those three green vectors together, because adding those three vectors, those green ones together, will always get me somewhere in the green plane. And so I'm not going to be able to solve this system. And that means that I'm going to be able to um, uh, look at, uh, or sorry, that means that if I look at the uh, augmented matrix and I row reduce, I'm going to end up with one of these inconsistency um, rows at the bottom. So the key observation here is that for a square system, so this means that the, the matrix is n by n, the coefficient matrix is is square. Um, <coughs> and, and similarly, this means that we have um, uh, n vectors of length n if we're looking at um, an example of, of vectors in our n. So for a square system, These two questions have the same answer for any square system. OK. And the reason is because we're bumping back into the um, characterization of invertibility theorem. And so the 
easy way to check for <coughs> when a set S is a basis. Well, what's the easy way to check whether or not uh, a matrix is invertible? Is to use the determinant. And so if we look at the um, Uh, the, f the first example um, that I gave you, the determinant of that matrix is minus 4. But if we look at the um, second one, then from the row reduced form, we clearly see that the determinant is zero. <coughs>